Scientists had long been interested in machine learning. But computers made very bad students because they started out from such a low level. For many people, it takes a PhD to become a data scientist. That's because data science requires a deep understanding of statistics, programming, machine learning, and business. Having a basic knowledge in all these different domains is achievable in a few months. But becoming an employable data scientist is where the real challenge lies. You need to be strategic about what you learn and how you learn it. Through my master's in computer science and applied mathematics, as well as by working closely with data science colleagues at Microsoft, I have found a path that will not only provide you with all the necessary skills, it will also prepare you for the data science interviews at big tech companies. In this video, I will share all the steps of this path and provide you the free resources you will need at every step. Along the way, I will also tell you three mistakes that stop people from becoming a data scientist. Let's start with the first pillar of data science and that is statistics. Let's say that Google decides to change the color of the search button to green and you're the data scientist in charge of testing this change on a small portion of Google users. Statistics will help you design this experiment and it will also guide you on what to measure. Not only that, statistics can help you decide whether the data you collected in your experiment is reliable or just some random noise. Statistics also sits at the core of machine learning algorithms like linear regression. So a good knowledge of statistics is necessary to become a good data scientist. But to learn statistics, you need to know some basic concepts of mathematics. Look, I know that many of you may not like maths, and I wish I could say that maths is not needed for data science. But if you're looking to build a good career in data science, you need to know some basic things. To make your life easy, I recommend doing this free four-week course on Coursera. This course is called Data Science Math Skills by Duke University. This course covers important concepts like mean, variance, derivatives, and Bayes' theorem. The best part about this course is that it's great for beginners. For example, it covers even the most basic things like Venn diagram and sigma notation. Another great thing about this course is that it does not try to teach you everything. It provides you just enough knowledge to get started with statistics. Now that you feel confident about your math skills, let's learn statistics. And this is where many people make their first big mistake, and that is they try to learn everything. Look, statistics is a very vast field, and it requires many, many years to fully understand it. For most data scientist jobs, you just need to know some key concepts in statistics. To put things in perspective, here is the distribution of different data science roles in the market. In this diagram, we see that the majority of data science roles are analytics roles, which means that they mainly focus on defining business metrics and making data-driven decisions through data visualization, among other things. I will link this article in the description for you to review. A major insight from this article is that statistics-heavy data science roles make up a small minority of 5% of the total roles. So we don't need to go very deep into statistics. In my case, I did multiple advanced level courses in statistics and later found out that I did not need most of it for data science. To learn all the key concepts that you actually need, I recommend this course called Introduction to Statistics by Stanford University. This course covers all the important ideas like probability, normal distribution, and confidence intervals, and many more. By the end of this course, you would know all the statistics you need to move on to machine learning. But before we can move on to machine learning, we need to learn some programming, which is the second pillar of data science. When it comes to programming for data science, we have primarily two languages to choose from. First one is R, which is purely designed for statistics and data analysis. Second and more popular option is Python, which is a full-fledged programming language that can be used for applications beyond statistics and machine learning. That is why I would recommend picking Python as your programming language. But how do we learn Python? In our video on the fastest way to learn coding and actually get a job, we recommended learning Python by doing actual coding. For that, we gave you this website called learnpython.org. On this website, complete the tutorials covering basics as well as data science. And as always, play with the code and complete the exercise portion. Now that we have learned programming, let's move on to the third pillar of data science, and that is machine learning. This is where many people make their second biggest mistake. They forget that knowing machine learning algorithms would not help much if you don't know how to get the data to apply these algorithms to. When you are working on your personal projects for machine learning, you can go to websites like UC Irvine's machine learning repo and choose data to work on. For example, in one of my personal projects for computer vision class, I used UC Irvine's handwritten digits datasets. But in the real world, you rarely get well-defined cleaned up data. You have to decide what data makes sense for your application and then use SQL to extract that data. That's why SQL questions are very common in data science interviews. The mistake that people make is that they skip learning SQL. To learn SQL, we will write some SQL queries. So go to this tutorial on W3Schools and do this hands-on tutorial. Make sure to go through at least the SQL tutorial portion at the top. Also, 
Don't forget the SQL examples portion at the bottom where you can test your knowledge. Before you can apply a machine learning algorithm, you need to know what your data looks like. Some of the best presentations that I have attended are the ones where data scientists slice and dice data to bring some deep insights just through data visualization. Two very popular libraries for data visualization in Python are Matplotlib and Seaborn. To learn these libraries, you can do this course called Data Visualization in Python or Coursera. In this course, you'll learn how to make box plots, scatter plots, and regression plots using the Matplotlib, Seaborn, and some other libraries. The best part is that this course also covers dashboarding, which is an essential part of most data science jobs. Once you know how to get the data you need and how to visualize it, you're ready to move on to the next step, which is machine learning. For machine learning, I have two options for you. The first option, which is more applied and even has code samples for different algorithms, is this course called Applied Machine Learning by Michigan University on Coursera. This course provides you with a nice playground in the form of Jupyter Notebooks, where you can apply what you just learned. It also covers popular machine learning Python libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Scikit-learn. The only problem with this course is that it skips a lot of mathematical details and might be hard for people who are not comfortable with not understanding everything when learning something new. For those people, I would recommend this machine learning specialization by Andrew Eng. If you don't already know, Andrew Eng is the founder of Coursera and works as a professor at Stanford. In many ways, Andrew Eng is an OG of the AI world. His original course on machine learning is probably the world's most watched machine learning course. In this new specialization, he has made his original course even better. It's still hard for me to believe that you can access the courses in this specialization for free on Coursera. If you really want to have a deep understanding of ML, this is the best course out there. The only caveat I would like to highlight here is that the code samples and the Jupyter notebooks that let you actually play with the code are not available for free with this course. Once you're done with the course, head over to Kaggle and do some hands-on practice. On Kaggle, you can see the projects that other people have built. You follow along in the beginning and build some confidence. When you are comfortable, you can participate in one of their competitions. This will do two things. One, it will give you confidence that you can complete data science projects independently. Two, you will build a portfolio of projects that you can write in your resume. Both machine learning courses that I mentioned earlier will introduce you to deep learning, but they don't go very deep into it. They essentially just have a couple of lessons on how to train neural networks. So we should also cover advanced concepts of deep learning. Wait, this is actually the third mistake most people make. They spend hours learning about the coolest new AI models like DALI or GPT-3. But in practice, you don't actually need them to get data science jobs. That's because if you look at the distribution of different data science jobs again, you'll see that only 18% of the jobs are algorithmic, which here refers to jobs that actually need machine learning. Now, I'm not saying that you should not learn about the latest advancements in AI. If you're genuinely curious, that's great. And you should definitely read the research papers outlining these models. All I'm trying to say here is that you won't miss out on any jobs just because you don't know how BERT works. The jobs that require the knowledge of these advanced models are very specialized and usually require a PhD. At least that's what I learned from my experience. During my master's in CS, I did multiple projects on advanced neural network models like RNNs and ResNets. But when I went through some interviews, I realized that this knowledge was not expected. So focus on the basics first, and if you have some time, keep expanding your knowledge by reading some research papers. The last pillar of data science that we need to cover is business. I know that to many of you, this sounds vague, and you're wondering why a data scientist would need knowledge of business. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you work as a data scientist at YouTube, and YouTube is launching a shorter video format that's similar to TikTok. You're asked to design an A-B test for this experiment, and in this experiment, you'll show these short videos to only a small section of users first and collect some metrics. What metrics would you look at to decide whether to launch this experiment across all users of YouTube? This is where business knowledge comes in. You'll decide metrics based on whether you're trying to acquire new users or you just want to increase the engagement of existing users. Here are a few metrics that can help you make this decision. By the way, metrics-based questions are very common in data science interviews. To answer these kinds of questions, I found this video on YouTube very helpful. I'll link it in the description. There are so many people who learn all the subjects that I covered in this video and still they can't get a good job. That's because they don't know how to make a great resume. To make sure you don't go jobless after putting in so much hard work, you can watch this video at the top. I will see you in the next one. Au revoir.